You're in the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. So, the reaction to last week's episode from an alleged vampire expert, I guess didn't do quite as well as I might have hoped before the show started. Because I think people kind of, sort of, expected a different kind of program. What do you think, Randall? Yeah, it, w- it uh, was kind of a surprise to me how it went as well. And um, it was pretty difficult for me to relate to it because I think so differently about uh, religion and vampires. And uh, it's right out there in the fringe for me. But uh, Doug was taking it pretty seriously, uh, given everything that we had to work with. We did a pretty good job uh, for people who are saying maybe getting a little tired of just the, you know, the same UFO stuff all the time. Well, this week we have the same UFO stuff, but we've got somebody this week who's been around for a while and was, I guess, became almost a celebrity or something back on October 11th, 1973. And before I introduce Calvin Parker to us, Randall, you were a young whippersnapper in 1973. Where were you? I was uh, out in BC, actually, uh, living in uh, Windermere. And uh, I was just going to school. I was hanging out with my friends, and that was about it. I remember the story being on the news. So this has been a really long time for me that this story has come and gone in and out of the news and attention. So it's really kind of a treat to have Calvin on to talk to someone who goes that far back in in my memory of UFO lore. Now, I was covering the news beat at a radio station called WCOJ in Coatesville, Pennsylvania, which served the Philadelphia suburbs. We were about, what, 40 miles southeast of Philadelphia, about 30 miles from Lancaster, which was further west of us. And the station carried pretty well. Now, just to put things in perspective, since we mentioned religion, this station was founded by a couple of Jewish men from Philadelphia. And eventually, I guess when they died off, it was sold to a Christian-oriented organization that turned it into a religious radio station. So the irony is two Jewish men selling it or at least the estate selling it to Christians, which certainly is respectful there, but just how it changed so much, the station. I thought one of the things I could do when we got the the Paracast on commercial radio was to go back to the radio stations I was at. But as many of you know, radio stations go through lots of changes over the years in terms of formatting and like that. So therefore, what we do, or what we did in the 70s, none of the stations I was at probably have the same format, or even the same ownership, as a matter of fact, like there. There's just a little story that came out about WCOJ, and this was in the Phoenixville News, which is in Pennsylvania. And the argument here is that ex-workers were devastated when Holy Spirit Radio bought this station and didn't really treat them very well. And as a matter of fact, probably fired them with little notice. Of course, in broadcasting, that's the way of the land. Anyway, I was covering the news beat as news director, and this story came on the wire services. On the side, I was co-publisher and editor of Caveat Tour magazine. Have you read my magazines at all, Randall? It posted now. I've browsed and just perused through a couple of them, but I just am so busy with so many other things that I haven't had a chance to do as much as I want. And really, what I'd like to do is also get some of those uh, copied over onto the USI site as well, so that there's a sort of a mirror for them. And uh, I guess we can talk about that later, but that would be something that I'd really like to do, as well as to see if I can get Don to share some more of the UFO magazine stuff. He's talking about Don Ecker. Anyway, we read about a young guy and an older guy 
Fishermen, right, Calvin Parker? Yes, sir. We were fishermen fishing when this happened. As fishermen, this was your profession? You were working for a company? No, it was actually a shipbuilders. We was working in the shipyards as uh, ship fitters and welders, but we decided to go fishing when we got off work that day. So uh, that's where it all started, after work. So how did you meet Mr. Hickson? Just co-workers? No, sir. Uh, my father and Charles Hickson was real good friends back in the 60s. We all lived in Sandersville, and we used to fish together, and I knew his children, and uh, we played together. Charles was a good deal older than I was, so I never was really friends with Charlie, more of associates you know till later on we became friends but uh up until then he was just an adult figure in my life that i knew and my daddy knew him real well so how old were you on october 11th 1973 i was 19 years old so uh, oh boy when i was 19 that was another story when i was 19 i was working for jim mosley at saucer news at 303 fifth <laughs> avenue in new york how times Fly when you're having fun. Now, as a teenager, what was your expectation of life? You're working at this company, got yourself a job. Was this going to be your lifetime profession at that point, or you hadn't decided? Well, I really hadn't decided, but I had intended for it to. Originally, I started uh, when I was 17 in the oil field, and I worked in the oil field. That was 16 hours a day, seven days a week. And I was in the process of getting married. This happened in October, and uh, I was going to get married in November. So I said, well, you know, I need a real job, something I can be home some. So I took a job at the shipyard with Charlie just to have a real job, what I call a real job. That lasted two days. Oh, boy. Did you actually get married? I did. Got married. November the 9th. Been married ever since. To the same woman? Yes, sir. What's her name? Dorothy Wynette Parker. We did take a little break apart from each other because of the stress of this happening. But, uh, you know, it worked out. we together now. We have a daughter together. And it's just things are going really good for us right now. You were telling me before we started the show, you are living just six miles from Pascagoula right now. Yes, sir, I am. I'm living in a little community called, uh, well, it's actually a city, Moss Point, Mississippi. And uh, from the place where this happened, I can get my boat and be over there in 25 minutes, or I can get in a car and be over there in 25 minutes. About the same difference. But we moved down. We got such a good deal after the hurricane on the house. They had these 90, I'd say 80% of the coast flooded during Katrina. And these houses had seven, eight foot of water in them. And you could buy them cheap because you had to fix them up. So we got such a good deal on the house, we went ahead and bought one down here and been here ever since. A fixer-upper, as they say. Yes, sir. So it you had basically a- had to go through a lot of work to clean that out, dry it out, get things going again. Oh, it stripped the whole inside out and all rewire it redo the drywall on the inside. So it, it's been, it was a lot of work. Uh, this house had eight foot of water in it. We actually had a house in law that got messed up then, too, because they're 100 miles apart. Calvin, let me do our break, and then we'll get okay. into more details about your case. The book, by the way, that he wrote is Pascagoula, The Closest Encounter, my story, from Flying Disc Press, Calvin Parker joining us this week. Full bore into UFOs with our co host, Jay Randall Murphy. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> We also have swag. You know, we have all these exclusive Paracast things that you can buy. We've got like, I guess, 60 or so different items. And entails t-shirts, sleeves for notebook computers, iPad cases, mouse pads, the Paracast jumbo tote bag, all sorts of t-shirts and jackets and stuff like that for men and women. We have 
a Paracast aluminum water bottle. All this stuff, you go to store.theparacast.com, store.theparacast.com. What makes it special is that the items are the best quality, you know, great T-shirts, fabrics, and they have our official logo on them. That's what makes them special in multiple sizes and colors. We even have stuff for children, stuff for women, stuff for men. We have all sorts of sizes, like small up to X large. A lot of good stuff. That's the swag from the Paracast. If you go to store.theparacast.com, stop by and take a shopping tour. Have you heard the warning from the dead doctors don't lie guy? I'm talking about Dr. Joel Wallach. He says if you have a four-inch medical chart, if you take prescription drugs for high cholesterol or high blood pressure, arthritis, joint pains, or other health issues, the medical profession is failing you. They're using you for an ATM machine. That's what he says. He has a free lecture revealing what pharmaceutical companies don't want you to know. There's been groundbreaking research and discoveries on how to effectively treat or eliminate over 900 different diseases naturally. And it's all in his free lecture called Deadly Recipe. You want it free? Call him toll free at 855-79-YOUNG. You ready? 855-79-YOUNG. Dr. Joel Wallach, the dead doctors don't lie guy says there's no reason why we shouldn't live to be at least 100 and have a great time getting there. Broadcasting to over a 1,000 radio stations, GCN programming is in all of the largest markets. A GCN advertising career could be the business opportunity you've been waiting for. Companies need hardworking representatives just like you to handle their needs, while you earn residual income which can last for years. Companies are buying and they need you. Email advertise at GCNlive.com or call 877-996-4327. That's 877-996-4327. Policies issued by American General Life Insurance Company, Houston, Texas. Not available in all states. For details, visit AIGdirect.com. Do you have a family? Would you like to help make sure they'll be taken care of if anything were to happen to you? If you answered yes, you probably need life insurance. Now, do you think life insurance is expensive? If you answered yes to that, too, you definitely need to give AIG Direct a call. We could find you a quarter of a million dollar policy for just $14 a month, which means you could save hundreds of dollars a year. Call us now for a free, no obligation quote. 1-800-919-5435. Since 1995, we've helped millions of people find out if they could save up to 70% on their term life insurance. See how affordably we can help you protect your family. Call AIG Direct now for your free quote. 1-800-919-5435. You could save up to 70%. That's 1-800-919-5435. 1-800-919-5435. I'm David Hall, founder of Diamond Gusset, where we're proud of our 100% grown and sewn American-made jeans. Whether you're out for dinner, working on the farm, or on the road, Diamond Gusset Jeans offers a full spectrum of styles and sizes for any occasion. To find yours, visit gusset.com. That's G-U-S-S-E-T.com. Our loyal customers enable us to continue sponsoring Liberty Media outlets like the one you're listening to. In Liberty, David Hall, Diamond Gusset Jean Company. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. We continue with Calvin Parker as we talk about his life. So what kind of work did you get into? Since your job lasted two days before this episode occurred, what kind of work did you finally get into? Well, I left the coast after this episode and went back to my hometown, to Laurel. The oil field was really booming good there, so I went back to work in the oil field. And I worked in that until Jimmy Carter got elected president and the oil field crashed. It was, uh, I guess, he overcharged. They overproduced and. You couldn't make a living in it no more because it just wasn't none of it. They started going overseas and all, getting their oil. So then I had to get into construction work. So I run track hoes, bulldozers, and got a job uh, as a superintendent on a construction crew and went to work for a real good friend of mine now that's down here. He's 
got an Indian company, and he's an Indian minority, and I went to work for him, and we become good friends. We fish together and uh, travel around. Matter of fact, I just talked to him today, so, you know, we're still real close. What does he think of what happened to you? Well, you know, it's kind of strange. Up until just a few months ago, nobody knew because I wouldn't talk to them about it. They knew who I was, and they knew something happened. But my friends, my family, I never talked to nobody about what had happened or where it was. And we just happened to be in a, uh, one of my neighbors passed away, and we was at his wake one evening. And I signed the uh, book to get in. Well, there was people there from out of town and all, and they, for some reason, they recognized the name. And they started swarming around and take, wanting pictures and taking autographs. And I just didn't feel like that was the place to do it. So me and my wife got in the car and left just out of respect for that family. And on the way home, she said, maybe you ought to write a book. Well, here I am sitting uh, really uneducated. But uh, it was just a freak thing. When I got back to the house, there was a message there. And how Philip had got my phone number with a flying disc. I don't know, but he was wanting me to uh, do a book or do something to another book. Uh, Charlie Hickson had a book, and he was wanting me to write a comment on the back of that or something. And we ended up talking, so I ended up writing this book. And I'm glad I did now because it's got everything out to open. Nothing's changed. And you've been in the media. You know sometimes the media will beef something up to make it a little more than what it is. So uh, I didn't like that. I, you know, tell it just exactly the way it is and write it down the way it is and don't beef it up. That's why I wanted to write a book. It's in a book. It's documented. They can't nobody change that. So it's there now. So in writing a book, and you're not a writer, did you go and get somebody to help you out? No, sir, I didn't. I just sat down. Uh, Philip asked me, he said, well, how long? He said, we can take two or three years to write this book. I said, take two or three years to write a book. And, you know, I don't have much of education, but I can sit down. I can read one in a week or two. I said, I know I could probably write one just as fast as I can read it. And the simple reason is I lived this story for 45 years. I've lived it every day. When I sat down to write the book, I told my wife, I said, I don't want no company. I don't want to talk on the phone. Every now and then, bring me a glass of tea or a drink of water back here or something. So I got in the room. I closed the door. Two weeks' time, the book was ready. And as I would do a chapter, I would email it to Philip, and he would go through it and edit it. Now, Philip knew how I was about not. He knows I didn't like no one to change the story all. So he let me keep it in my words and the way and he's caught a lot of criticism over that, uh, not editing out some of the stuff. But uh, the way it is, is just the way that it is. And the truth is always the truth. How oh. was it that you got hooked up with Philip Mantle? Uh, Martin Willis, a, a friend of mine that I knew back for a long, been knowing for a long time, you know, well, I can't really call him a friend, but uh, he had called two or three times wanting to do a podcast. Well, he called one day and we was on the phone and I said, yeah, I'll go ahead, turn your recorders on or whatever you do. So I did a little short podcast. He said, you know, everybody's wanting to know how you're doing. Just tell them. So I had my uh, email address and my phone number. So one day, Philip he was talking to Martin, and he was wanting to get a hold of me. Well, Martin said, well, you know, let me look through my files. I have his email address and his phone number in here, and maybe I can give them to you. And it just so happened to work perfect for that day that we was on the way home from the funeral home and got in, and uh, we had been talking about a book, or my wife had, because actually I could have cared less if I'd done one. Okay, let's go back in time. It's October 11th. You're going fishing with Charles Hickson. Did you catch anything, by the way? No, sir. We caught a couple of little trash fish, what we call trash fish down here. Okay. So what do you remember of that day, starting at the beginning? Well, 
we had got off work at the F.B. Walker and Sun Shipyard. And uh, on the way home, it was hot for an October day. I mean, it was hot and humid, 100% humidity. So Charlie said, you know, instead of going on home and uh, just eating and sitting around in this heat and stuff, cooling down, let's try to go fishing for a little bit. He said, it's late this evening and we'll cool down. So that sounds good. I said, I don't have no fishing equipment, Charlie. So he said, oh, well, I got plenty. And down here, you know, you, it's just not heard of borrowing somebody's fishing equipment. But that day I did. So he, we went to his house. We picked up some equipment. And he said, I know a place not far from the house here. And uh, they used to unload grain ships there. They got an old grain elevator. And where they unload that grain, some of that grain would fall off into the water and the fish come up there to eat them. And it's always plenty of fish there to catch. So I thought, well, maybe that's a pretty good idea. So we got. We drove, it took about 15 minutes uh, from his house, and we got to the site where we was going to fish. And the first thing I noticed, man, it was trashy there. There was tall marsh grass and a lot of trash on the ground. And I had asked him, why don't, why don't they clean this mess up? What's going on? He said, well, Calvin, what happens when it floods, and it does pretty regular down here, the water gets up. And it brings all this trash out from under these people's houses because they built up on stilts and stuff or anything in these fields that's washed up. And it brings it up on these lots. So when the tide goes out, it just leaves it there, and there's just no way to keep up with cleaning it up. That was an old abandoned shipyard we was fishing at, and they didn't have nobody to work there. Can I ask you a quick question just so that we can get the setting uh, in a little more detail? So about what time of day was this? Before you answer that, we got to take care of business. Okay. okay. We have Calvin Parker. The book is Pascagoula, The Closest Encounter, My Story. And we're getting into it now. With Gene Steinberg, J. Randall Murphy, you're in the Paracast. <laughs> Do the letters IRS give you anxiety? I'm Dan Pilla. I've defended people from the IRS for more than 40 years. My book, How to Get Tax Amnesty, created the tax resolution industry and is responsible for helping hundreds of thousands of people. It can help you, too. If you're a non-filer or facing IRS enforcement right now, your case is unique. You need real help, not cookie-cutter advice. My clients get my personal attention. Buy my book at danpilla.com and get a free consultation directly with me. That's danpilla.com. Let's start solving your tax problem right now. If you like alkaline water or know someone that does, you're going to love the Dillon Living Water Bottle. It creates alkaline water on the go while reducing plastic waste and saving you money. Made with surgical-grade stainless steel, the Dillon Bottle increases the pH up to 9 to deliver both alkaline and antioxidant water anywhere you want it. Alkaline water is healthier, tastes better, and can even boost energy. The Dillon Bottle makes it easy and affordable to be healthy and achieve optimal hydration. Get your Dillon Bottle today at dyln.co. That's dyln.co. For USA Radio News, I'm Wendy King. It was a day of smiles and tears for family and friends of Maverick Senator John McCain, who was honored at the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. His widow, Cindy, tweeted, We lost our hero, our friend, our mentor, our father, our grandfather, and my husband. President Obama talked about chats he and his former rival used to have. John would come over to the White House, and we'd just sit and talk in the Oval Office, just the two of us. We talk about policy, and we talk about family, and we talk about the state of our politics. President Trump didn't attend the ceremony because he wasn't invited. He went instead to his Northern Virginia golf club to relax. His daughter Ivanka and son-in-law Jared Kushner did attend the service at Washington National Cathedral. You're listening to USA Radio News.
Have you written a book and want to get it published? Then call Page Publishing at 800-605-6995. Immediately, that's 800-605-6995. Page Publishing is looking for authors of all types of books. And unlike most publishers, Page Publishing will take the time to review each and every book submitted to them and give you their feedback. If they like what they read, they'll get your book into bookstores and for sale online at Amazon, the Apple iTunes Store, Barnes & Noble, and other outlets. They handle everything. Editing, cover design, copyright protection, printing, publicity, and distribution. So if you've written a novel, children's book, cookbook, inspirational work, poetry, or a biography and want to get it published, then you need to call Page Publishing and do it immediately. Call 800-605-6995 now for your free author submission kit. Again, for your free author submission kit, call 800-605-6995. That's 800-605-6995. Your road to fame and fortune could very well start with this simple phone call. Call Page Publishing at 800-605-6995 for your free author submission kit. How well and how fast does heart and body extract work to improve blood circulation? Listen. My name is Ellis, and I'm 66 years old, and I live in Jacksonville, Florida. Two years ago, I was diagnosed as having clogged arteries. I had 70% blockage in one artery leading to my heart. They wanted me to go on Plavix, but I refused, knowing the negative side effects. Heart and body extract is a unique balance, synergy, and proportion of herbs reaching from head to toe at maximum absorption around 95% at the cellular level. Within the first month, I felt a dramatic difference. The heaviness in my legs was reduced, and within two months, I felt completely normal. Your natural organic herbal formula for heart health is Heart and Body Extract. Heart and Body Extract comes with a 100% ironclad money back guarantee. Details at hbextract.com or call 866-295-5305 for Heart and Body Extract. Call 866-295-5305. 866-295-5305 for Heart and Body Extract. <laughs> This is Jerome Clark, author of the UFO Encyclopedia and other books. You're listening to the Paracast. So Randall has activated the echo, echo, echo. We hope Calvin Parker doesn't mind. Okay, so Randall asked you the time of day, so let's start moving into this experience. Okay, as far as exactly what time it was, I don't know. Charlie nor myself had a watch, but I'm figuring we probably got off work at 5.30. It was close to 6 o'clock because it's about 15 minutes to Charlie's apartment, about 15 minutes back over there where we were fishing. And the moon is getting close to the same time of the year, and it was about the same lightness as what it is now. So it was probably close to six, not exact time, but real close in there. It would have still been light outside then. Uh, a little bit of light, yes, sir. We uh, got out of the car and got our equipment, and it took a little while to walk through that mess to get down to the pier, and they had a no steel pier there. And we had just got situated, and I had cast out there, and while I was fishing, I was looking across the river, my back was to the car, but I was looking across the river, and there was a big Coast Guard ship there. And I was thinking to myself, you know, they build these things out of steel. How in the world do they float? I have no idea how they float. And I noticed some blue hazy lights coming across the water from behind us. And that's what got my attention, you know, because my brain was just drifting thinking about that ship. I turned around and looked. By the time we had turned around to look, there was a, a brighter light that happened. So I figured what had happened, this light was coming from inside the craft that had landed, and it got real bright, almost blinded bright, and it faded out these blue lights. So it was just a second, you know, we couldn't see there because it was having to squinch your eyes and all. This was about 300 foot behind us. And about halfway up, I noticed there was three figures coming toward us, and we still couldn't make them out. But I knew they was moving on pretty good, but I didn't understand how because of the trash and all there. They was coming on good. Then they got closer, and I noticed they wasn't human. You know, it was more mechanical acting uh, than human. Two of them got a hold of Charlie, and one of them got a hold of myself. And instantly, when they got a hold of me, they just gave me a knockout shot or something. 
I was thinking about running and scared and everything else. But when he grabbed me by the arm, I felt a little steam and I just couldn't move. I mean, I, all I could do was look. I could see, but I couldn't turn my head one way or another. I didn't know where Charlie was. All I knew, I was floating toward this bright light. From this time on, I didn't see Charlie because I couldn't turn my head to look for him. But when we got to the door, the lights were so bright, and I remember looking. I didn't see any light fixtures inside the craft. All the lights looked like they was coming out of the walls, just illuminating out of the walls. So we took a little left turn, then we turned right. They took me into a separate room in there, and I don't know if it was a table, but they backed me up. They laid me down. Now, I didn't feel a table under me. It could have been a table under there, but I was on like a 45-degree angle. And the thing about it, the way they was moved back to the ship I had left this part out, they was floating across the top of that grass, and I, I couldn't figure out why it didn't break my arms. I still had my thoughts, and I could still see. I just couldn't didn't have no body functions. When they laid me on this table, I was about a 45-degree angle, and there's something that come out of the ceiling about the size of a deck of cards, and it got right in front of my eyes, and I could hear it click. Then it went to my right ear, and I heard it click again, went behind my head, and it did that all the way around my head, and it clicked four times, and then it just shot back up into the ceiling. And when it did that, there's another being come out and this one looked real you know i'm calling it a her because it didn't look like that old big ugly one that brought me in there but it was more of a feminine looking creature and then she mumbled a little bit she went mm -hmm, like that and the big ugly one walked left out of the room he didn't walk out he just kind of glad it out well she come over and got her hands she grabbed me by the skin on the face and all and I couldn't feel any body heat. I couldn't feel any texture in her hands, or I couldn't feel any pain. And she pulled around on my mouth and looked around my nose a little bit. By that time, I was starting to come out of the little trance thing I was in. And I was thinking, you know, I'll just grab her around the neck, and we'll get out of here, and I, I'll have proof of what happened here. But uh, it didn't work out that way. It's like she told me. She uh, mentally, I call it mental telepathy. She had said, don't be afraid. We're not going to harm you. She turned around and made a little mumbling noise, and the big ugly one come back in. This was a frightening looking creature, and he had to be a soldier or a robot or something. So when he came back in, he grabbed me by the arm, and I automatically went back straight up to the same position that he brought me in with. We glided across the marsh grass, and it didn't take but a second to get back to the pier. And he set me on the pier with my arms were stretched out facing the water then, and I couldn't move. And then I heard Charlie Calvin, Calvin, you okay, son? And when I turned around and looked, the bright lights just closed up. So I figured they had closed the door on the craft, and that thing made a little zipping noise and just shot straight up into the air. Are these all conscious memories? Or were they retrieved through hypnotic regression or a combination? This was conscious memories, but Bud Hopkins, and I'll tell you a little bit about that in a little bit, had done a hypnosis session on me. This came out in 95, too. There's a lot more come out in that session. Okay, so what you were telling us now, you remembered it when the incident occurred. But when you were hypnotized, you learned more about what went on. There was a lot more that went on that I didn't remember. Matter of fact, I didn't even remember being hypnotized. Philip, the publisher, I had mentioned to him that Bud Hopkins tried to hypnotize me. He said, well, I know Bud. He passed away, but David Jacobs has his files and all. He said, I'm going to ask him with your permission to see if I can get a hold of him. I said, that's fine, but there's nothing in them. So it wasn't just the next day he had got a hold of David Jacobs, and David had the original tape where Bud Hopkins had hypnotized me. And it was a long session, I would say a few hours. So when I got the transcripts back, I didn't even remember being hypnotized. 
I would have bet money I hadn't been because I didn't think I could be. And now when I went to be hypnotized, I took a friend with me because I had seen these old side shows in Las Vegas before where they hypnotized a whole audience. And I always thought that was a bunch of bull. Apparently it wasn't. Uh, they might not have been. But I was shocked when I started reading these transcripts on it. 99% of it I remembered, and it was in my subconscious mind. But what Bud did on the other part that I didn't remember he put a post-hypnotic suggestion in my head that as I got to where I could handle it, I would remember it. There's some pretty brutal stuff that happened in there. The only reason I went to see Bud was in, in the 90s. I left going fishing one day, and I was supposed to be back before dark. So I went to a little island over here, Cat Island, and I was supposed to be back home before dark. So I told my wife I'd be home 3, 4 o'clock in the evening. I packed a lunch, and I left, and I went, and I remember sitting there fishing, and I said, well, you know, I need to go ahead and eat this lunch before it runs out here. I didn't have no ice to mount to anything, and next thing I knew, it was 4 o'clock in the morning, and I would come to, and my lunch was still there, and I didn't know what had happened. I was thinking of clips and everything else, but I had that much missing time when I got home. I didn't believe it where I'd been. We've got more with Calvin Parker. You're in the Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Do you need a website? Well, you can get a great deal on hosting services with Namecheap's legendary coupon code. They're offering substantial hosting discounts on shared hosting, business hosting, VPS hosting, reseller hosting, and even dedicated servers. Namecheap is preferred by millions. It's backed by a money-back guarantee. Use the coupon code LEGENDARY to cash in on the special deal at Namecheap.com, Namecheap.com. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream, a dream that turns out to be a nightmare because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. When you use public Wi-Fi, hackers and identity thieves can see anything you do online. Embarrassing photos, your web history, even your passwords. That's why I use private internet access to encrypt my internet connection for less than 10 cents a day. Sign up now at privateinternetaccess.com and in just a few minutes, you'll be browsing anonymously and only sharing what you want to share. Privateinternetaccess.com. It's time to protect your online privacy. Most of you know that heart disease is the number one silent killer in the U.S. What if I told you for just $54.95 a month you could fight against heart disease naturally? At Heart and Body Extract, we've been helping thousands of people get back to a healthier heart. Don't just take my word for it. Check out all of the success stories at hbextract.com. Or to order, call 866-295-5305. That's 866-295-5305. hbextract.com. Don't risk it when you can take charge of it. It's a no-brainer. A Big Berkey water filter is the one you need, period. You need a water filter that removes chlorine, fluoride, pharmaceuticals, BPA, and other endocrine disruptors, pesticides, bacteria, viruses, and much more, right? And does it all at only two cents per gallon. Get the original most trusted name in gravity water filtration, Big Berkey. And now GCN listeners receive 5% off ceramic filter systems using code GCN. Call or click 1-877-99-BERKEY or BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. That's 1-877-99-BERKEY. Non-attorney paid spokesperson. Could your house go into foreclosure? Are you behind on your mortgage payments? Does it seem like the bank has no interest in helping you save your home and you feel like you have nowhere to turn for help? Then we have good news for you. Foreclosure Protection Services can help save your home as they specialize in foreclosure assistance. That's all they do. 
If you're behind on your mortgage payments, being threatened with foreclosure, have been denied a loan modification, or been the victim of a predatory loan, it's critical that you call Foreclosure Protection Services now at 800-667-9035. Their network of attorneys and their agents are available to speak to you now. If you're behind on your mortgage payments, Foreclosure Protection Services can help stop the foreclosure process. Call today before it's too late. New laws are in effect that may save your home. Call Foreclosure Protection Services now at 800-667-9035. 800-667-9035. That's 800-667-9035. Healthcare reform is confusing. With the loss of the Obamacare mandate, those needing help can now choose an affordable alternative. By joining Liberty HealthShare, you're part of a community of health-conscious Americans all over the country who control their own health care costs and choices. Liberty HealthShare is not insurance. It is an association of self-pay patients who unite with like-minded people to share the cost of their medical needs. Neighbor helping neighbor. Learn more now by going to libertyoncall.org. That's libertyoncall.org. Hi, it's Greg Cameron from PresidentialUFO.com. You're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. So Calvin Parker is talking about his interactions and a subsequent experience. But before we get into that, Calvin, I want to ask you, before October 11th, had you ever read about UFOs? Did you have any experiences, weird experiences, not necessarily UFOs before then? Well, I never read about them. I didn't know what a UFO was. I mean, I wouldn't even known that terminology if somebody had told it to me. But I did have a weird experience. Uh, my brother and I used to uh, have to share a room when we were small in the time period that I remember and the reason I can put it together because John F. Kennedy was assassinated right about that time. So I, that was one event that I remember to get a time schedule on it. He woke up saying there was uh, a ghost in the room leaning over me. I never believed him. I thought he just got paranoid and scared. But that's about the closest thing that I could uh, remember happening then. But as far as reading about them, you know, there was three TV stations back in, ABC, NBC, and CBS. And we come in on Sunday evenings, the only time we was allowed to watch TV and watch Walt Disney. You didn't have no cell phones. You didn't have no computers. You know, it was a great world back in without all this stuff. When did you run across Bud Hopkins' Missing Time book then? Well, I've actually never read the book. But I had heard he had one with people missing time. So, and a friend of mine had told me that. And uh, I said, had heard he was speaking at a conference in somewhere in Florida, in uh, uh, Tampa, Florida, or somewhere around there. So I said, well, I'm going to drive down there and talk to Bud. So I asked this friend of mine to go with me because I didn't want to be seen in that conference. I know if I had went in there, they'd wanted me to talk, and I didn't want to talk about it. So I got him to go in to where Bud was speaking, and he told Bud who I was out there. And of course, Bud knew my name and said I wanted to talk to him. So Bud told us to go on back to his motel room that uh, he would see me when he got through there. And that's when he came back to the room, and, and uh, I agreed to be hypnotized by him. But I made that friend of mine stay in there with me when he did. Interesting. Um, so when you were floated back out of the craft then, uh, it to you, it seemed like it was a very short period of time. But later it turned out that it, you realized that it was actually longer than you thought it was. Is, am I getting that correct? Yes, sir. It was a little more time consuming there than uh, what I thought. And it was so much going on. When we were floated back out, you know, we had to, we went through this deal where uh, we had to figure out what we was going to do. I didn't want to tell nobody. This is right when I come out, we were sitting back on the pier talking about what had happened. So I didn't want to tell nobody. Charlie didn't want the press to know or nothing, but he did want to tell somebody. So he decided he was going to call Keesler Air Force Base in Biloxi and tell them what happened. So we went to a payphone. 
outside of a little store, and all the stores, you know, back in were closed up at six o'clock in the evening. So we got to this payphone. He called Keesler, and he told them, they said, we don't fool with UFO sightings or nothing like that anymore. You call your local authorities on that. So he ended up calling the local sheriff department, and they sent a patrol car out to, at the store, told us not to move, just to stay right there. They sent a patrol car out, and it didn't take them long to get there either. And they did a uh, field sobriety test on us and all to check and see we'd been drinking and uh, said, okay, y'all follow us back to the sheriff department. You know, you know, that sounds kind of intrusive saying, well, maybe you were drunk when you had this experience. Yeah. And I could understand it if somebody had told me that. That's probably one of the first things I would have thought. Now I wouldn't. You know, I sat there and listened to them, see what they had to say, then make up my mind. But they checked to be sure we weren't drinking and all and took us to the sheriff department or we followed them there and they put us in different rooms and interrogated us. Then they put us in the same room together and left us in there together. Now, little did I know they had a tape recorder in the room and that's what they call the secret tapes has come out on this deal. They let Charlie and I sit there and talk back and forth with each other. And then they come in, and I knew they got something out of the drawer over there and walked in another room. I didn't know it was a tape recorder. They came in and got the tape recorder out, took it in there and let the sheriff listen to it. He came in there and told us, well, y'all can go home now. I said, Sheriff Diamond, I said, please don't tell nobody about this. I don't want no publicity. And he says, no, we don't. we're not in the news Thing. We law enforcement, where well, you don't have to worry about it. But they were therefore testing you <laughs> to see if it's something you made up by listening to have you talk with each other. Exactly right. And I'm glad they did now because that knocked down a lot of rumors, like the drinking rumor, you know, and uh, it knocked down a rumor about the fear that we went through while we were sitting in there. So. We went on home next morning. We got up, going to go back to work. And when we got to work, I noticed there was more cars out there than uh, it usually was. But we, what they call brass in, instead of a time clock, you got a piece of brass, you hand them, and they mark it in. And we went on tour workstations. Now, we wasn't there five minutes. They was calling us to the office. So I thought, oh, Lord. I got sick on my stomach because I just didn't want to talk to nobody. But I knew there was a reason they was calling us. So they called us to the office. And when they did, they said, we got to shut down our office more or less today because of the new, the media attention. The phones is ringing off the hook. We can't conduct no business in here. He said, the media's over everything. So they got their attorney, uh, Joe Clamingo was his name, to come down there and handle the media and to uh, make sure they got us to a hospital. And then they took us and got us checked for radiation. But it was a all heck break loose there for a little while. I mean, the media was hounding on us. Later, when they got through with us, I asked the sheriff, why did y'all tell them? He said, we didn't. The only thing I could figure that might have happened that the word got out was back then, like I say, there wasn't no computers, there wasn't no um, cell phones, but everybody had these scanners and they would listen to the fire department, the sheriff department. In other words, people just doing what they do best, being nosy. So that's got to be the way that they picked it up. And I know that had to be it because I had a scanner myself. I didn't have it on that day, but I had one. And I, I'm almost sure that's how the word got out. And somebody started calling the press asking about it. If we could back up to when you were taken out of the craft, you, did you just find yourself back at the pier kind of thing? Or do you remember kind of being floated back over the, the grass? Or No, um, I remember being floated back to the grass. I could see. I just couldn't move. I could see as we left the door. And I could see across the river and I was 
kind of moving over the top of the grass. It was actually a pretty good feeling, you know, just kind of floating through there like that. And then they I, set you down back by the river and along, along with uh, Charlie? Yes, sir. They set, put me in almost the same place they picked me up in. It probably wasn't two foot difference, except this time I was out facing the river and my arms were stretched out and I couldn't get them down for a second. But uh, Charlie said that uh, he got weak on his legs and he fell down and he had trouble getting up when he seen me, but he got up, you know, and he started talking to me to be sure I was okay. And uh, how did you guys find getting around after that? Uh, could you see okay? And, you know, was there plenty of visibility? Yeah. Uh, once, that, once that door closed and all them bright lights was gone, it didn't take but a minute. Uh, now, the next day, my eyes was kind of swelled a little bit and puffy and watering a little bit. And I think that was from all the bright lights that was coming out. Charlie's was too. But uh, I had asked him at that uh, hospital they took us to to get checked. And they said, well, y'all weld for a living, so it could be, you know, you watch somebody weld. But that's not, that's not what I did because I was careful to watch my eyes when I was doing that. Let's have another break and then continue with the story. Calvin Parker with Gene and Randall, you're in the Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Attack of the Rockoids has been well received by critics and readers alike. It's a thrill a minute story you'll never forget. A former U.S. military intelligence officer is haunted by intense dreams about a beautiful woman pleading for his help after a terrible battle in outer space. But the dreams turn out to be true and thrust him into a telepathic love affair with a woman whose faraway planet is intent on destroying the Earth. And now the gripping tale continues in The Coming of the Protectors. It's the second book of the Rockoids trilogy, a galaxy-spanning adventure that pits our hapless heroes against powerful, fanatical enemies that threaten the lives of freedom-loving beings everywhere. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors, classic science fiction at its best, available now. For more details, visit rockoids.com. That's R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S dot com. It's been said, any society is only three missed meals away from chaos. Those times may be near. Think about it. Our country faces multiple terrorist threats and aggressions from Russia and North Korea. Social unrest and violent marches yet again may lead to looting of stores and city shutdowns. And our crumbling infrastructure leaves our power grid vulnerable to long-term outages from a single cyber attack. When the chaos from any one of these threats arises, the government knows it can't provide during a widespread national emergency. That's why you need your own plan for self-reliance. That's where My Patriot Supply comes in. Get a four-week survival food supply for only $99. That includes breakfast, lunches, and dinners. Order online at preparewithgcn.com. $99 bucks for four weeks of survival food that tastes like homemade cooking and lasts up to 25 years from My Patriot Supply. Get your kits today at preparewithgcn.com. Free shipping is included. Preparewithgcn.com. <laughs> Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. So, Calvin Parker, as we continue the second four segments of the show, what do you think of the echo effects that Randall's adding? Well, they different. <laughs> they sound good. That's my uh, dollar store microphone. Oh, okay. <laughs> dollar Tree. I've seen them in Dollar Tree before. So, okay. So, w was it still pretty light outside then, or has it? No, it was. Uh, it was a full 
what I want to call a harvest moon, but it was a good full moon, and you could see without a flashlight how to get around and get back to your car and all, but it was dark. Oh, that's interesting. So when you got there, it was uh, still fairly light outside, but then when you got floated out, it was completely dark. Yes, sir, that's true. So Now, I read, uh, I believe in... Uh, part of the story someplace that you there was some trouble with your car can you tell us about that when we got back to the car uh we went to get in and i looked over and the the windows on the passenger side were shattered i mean shattered in place they were still in place and they didn't fall out until charlie opened the door and closed it then they just kind of fell out but uh then we tried to crank the car, and it took a good 15 minutes to get the car cranked. And what kind of surprised me, though, back then, if you cranked on a car very long, you sit there and crank, your battery would run down. This battery never did lose no charge. I mean, it was bright. I mean, it, the lights were still bright, and it turned the car over good and everything. And then it, after it cranked, it run rough for a while. Those uh, windows that were shattered, were they facing toward or away from where the craft was, or do you recall that? Well, we pulled straight up, and the craft was probably, it's hard to estimate. I would say the closest part of it was probably 50 foot from our car, where it was sitting there from the passenger side, so they was facing toward the craft the passenger side was and those were the ones that were shattered yes sir that's true so the other ones didn't have nothing wrong with them so we're kind of in, we're sort of led to believe there that the uh the craft could have been responsible for actually causing the damage to the windows i always will believe that now what i regret that the sheriff department didn't load us up right then, take us right back out to the spot where this happened and do a rope it off and do a thorough investigation. But they didn't do it. And I dang sure wasn't going to go back there by myself. But I, I should have and documented everything. But uh, it was two days later, I guess a couple of days later, before people started showing up looking for souvenirs and things there. How long did it take before this attracted the attention of J. Allen Hynek? Uh, we got abducted October 11th. October the 12th, he was down there, or 13th one. It was just, it was a day or two. But him and Dr. Harder flew down on their own dime and uh, come to see us. So he was right on it right at the very beginning, and I imagine he would have gone to the site and checked it out pretty well. Did, did they find any trace evidence there or flattened flattened grass or anything that would indicate that there was a ship there? I'm not for sure. He, uh, he did an intent interview with uh, Charlie and I, and him and Dr. Harder did. But uh, we were so busy, I'm not for sure, because we still had to go get checked for radiation, talk to Kiesler, go to the hospital, give a press release, and then they, the shipyard got us out of town as quick as we could. So Charlie went back home, and I went back to Laurel. Fast question here. How long did you last at the shipyard before that job became untenable? Well, actually, as far as working, that was my first day at work, October the 11th. My last day, I went to work, and we didn't ever get a chance to work again. And, but I have to say, in all honesty, they said, oh, we're going to pay y'all a couple of weeks, and y'all take off. And I wouldn't have felt right if I took their money. Uh, I did take a little check from them for a couple of days there. But... Uh, we're going to pay y'all to take off. We don't want y'all here. Y'all interfering with the worker. And we was because the workers in the shipyard, you know how they are. They have a lot of questions they want to ask you. 
The media was there. So they just made better production with us not being there. So they were happy to pay you to get rid of you. So what did you do then? Is that when you went back to construction? Oh, that's right. You uh, went to the oil rigs first. Yes, sir. I went back to the oil rigs in Laurel. I left the shipyard uh, just as soon as I left Keesler or where that night I drove all the way back to Laurel because I knew my family was going to be worried about me. But we didn't have phones and all back in, so you could call and uh, talk to anybody. So I said, well, the only thing they hear is what they hear in the news media, and that's not real good. So I left and went back to Laurel and went to see them. They never asked me what happened, where it happened. They just said, are you okay? And I said, I am. And that's about it. You know, let me ask you here about the media attention. So you were paid, you left the job. You were paid to leave. Were they still being annoyed by the media? They were. I mean, it was, it get worse every day. There for a while, I, uh, I when I moved back to the coast down here, one of my neighbors down there was a foreman over the whole job, and uh, he didn't recognize me to start with. And I was sitting on the road out there one day, and he stopped. He said, where you been? I ain't seen you in a while. And uh, I said, well, believe it or not, I'm writing a book. What you writing a book about? Well, I told him, he said, you don't remember me? I said, no, not really. But, you know, it's hard to remember somebody 45 years later. You can't look at them and tell that's who they were. Because I look totally different now than what I did then. And he said, I remember when they called y'all to the office in there. And he told me his name, and I remembered the name. He said, you got on your hands and knees out in the parking lot and was throwing up. I said, you're right. So, uh, but he told me that for about two weeks, the media bombarded them over there. And I know they did because they came, uh, they tracked me down in Laurel. Now, how they tracked you down back in, I don't know. They didn't have the computers and stuff where they they know where you live. So they, they followed you. I mean, they found you. I don't know how. Sounds to me like they were following you, literally. I think they were. Uh Uh-huh. It's almost like having private detectives after you. And if you're not really educated at that sort of thing, you wouldn't notice it. You were 19 years old. You're a kid. How long did this media attention last before things died down? I'm going to hold the response to that question. We're going to create what we call in the Paracast a cliffhanger, you know, before we get hung by our cliffs and that sort of thing. Let me tell you about something we haven't mentioned too much on the show. It's called the Paracast Plus. And what's it all about? Well, the Paracast Plus allows you to download a copy of this show free of the network ads. And it's not just to answer the people at YouTube who complain about things like that. It is to provide an alternative version of the show with better quality audio. We also offer the After the Paracast podcast. We've been doing this for about five years now. And we have an incredible library of material with After the Paracast special interviews. To learn more about Paracast Plus, go to plus.theparacast.com, plus.theparacast.com. Calvin Parker with Gene Steinberg and Jay Randall Murphy, you're in. The Paracast. Neighbors, we've made such a deal with HelloFresh. And it means that everyone listening to this show can receive $30 off your first week of deliveries when you go to HelloFresh.com and use the offer code PARACAST30. You know, with HelloFresh, you can choose the delivery day that works best for you. They've got a wide variety of chef-curated recipes that change weekly. And can you imagine me cooking Japanese panko chicken It makes me feel like I'm a chef. It means also that you could actually get your meal cooked in 30 minutes. For busy people, this is perfect. The simple recipes include step-by-step instructions so even I can figure it out. 
Go to HelloFresh.com, use the offer code PARACAST30 to get $30 off your first week of deliveries. HelloFresh.com. Let's talk tough. Let's talk comfort. Let's talk about down-home value. Made in the USA blue jeans like you wore as a kid. Remember? There's a place down in Tennessee where they make blue diamond gusset jeans. They so pride in every stitch. Guarantee you love the way they fit. Put a diamond gusset in the crotch where you need it most. Blue diamond gussets got it. Others don't. For good old fashioned comfort, get diamond gusset jeans. Every stitch guaranteed. And our Defender motorcycle jean comes Kevlar reinforced. See them at GUSSET.com. That's gusset.com. Or call 888 848 7738. That's 888 848 7738. Diamond gusset jeans got it. Others don't. Bacon lovers, we ship free. Try our amazing bacon. No refrigeration required. Proprietary value-added packaging provides 10-year shelf life and protects the leanest, thickest, center-cut, fully-cooked bacon in America today. Ready to eat right from the pouch or warm and serve. Savory and delicious. Wholesale price for your everyday use. Order today at readytoeatbacon.com. Readytoeatbacon.com. Long distance travel or long hours in front of a computer can take its toll on your body. Get relief for your neck or back pain when you search Amazon for sunshine pillows, heating wraps, and pads, often listed as an Amazon choice. Why take another pill? Now, from Sunny Bay and by customer demand, we introduce our extra long neck heating wrap, a complete wrap, wide and hands-free, and brings fast relief to those who suffer from neck or back pain. You can easily find sunshine pillows on Amazon. Or search Amazon for our new Sunny Bay disposable heat pads. Or look for Sunny Bay heated neck wraps for relief from back pain to menstrual pain and cramps. Sometimes life can be a pain in the neck or back or shoulder. See why our company, Biomed DB Design, has a lifetime 100% positive rating on both Amazon and Etsy. Just go to Amazon.com and search Sunny Bay or call us 253-678-1361. Has your body ever gone low blood sugar feeling weak, shaky, knowing you better eat something fast? We all know high blood sugar can lead to many metabolic problems. At GCNteam.com, we have a healthy blood sugar pack, focusing on the structure and function of stable blood sugar. Find us at GCNteam.com or call 877-878-4203. Nothing feels worse than unstable blood sugar. Call 877-878-4203. That's 877-878-4203. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. This came from the Dollar Tree store. We're giving them free advertising, right, Randall? Uh, there's several different versions of the dollar store up here. I don't know what you've got down there, but uh, we have like the dollar store, the buck or two, the, the, uh, <laughs> and a couple of other versions. Well, I know I visited the dollar store once a few weeks ago, got a really nice pair of reading glasses for $1. Not bad at all. Hasn't broken apart yet. And I got two pairs of socks. Okay, Calvin Parker, the question was, of course, about the media attention following you around, the paparazzi, whatever it is, how long did it take before that stopped? Actually, the media never stopped following me around. About three years ago, I was sitting on the back porch and a car drove up. We got a screened in back porch and he stopped. And he jumped out across the ditch. He said, I'm here to interview you. I said, well, who are you? And he said, I'm with the Associated Press. I said, no, I don't think you're here to interview me. He said, you might as well let me. I'm going to sit out here. Now, if I'd been a violent person, I would have drug him down to the river and put a boat anchor around him and throwed him in. But uh, anyhow, we we conducted our interview, and we went to the site where it was. But 
actually the media has never really quit. They just got a little better through the years because I got better at hiding. Well, I think also it's a little easier to find you now because you've got all the extra equipment. Oh, yeah. I don't even try to hide now. I just let it go. What uh, does your child think about all this? You know, I've never really talked to her. In a way, it's exciting to her. She is a, uh, she married a dentist and they lived in Covington, Louisiana. She's a dental hygienist. And, uh, you know, I told her, I said, I'm going to write a book about that. And I thought she thought I was kidding her. She said, you are. I said, yeah. So, uh, you know, when she started seeing it come across on Facebook, she started believing me a little bit. So we talked about it a little bit and all. And uh, she seems pretty excited about it at times. Well, the whole family really does. Well, if her dad's a celebrity. What else can you think? Yeah, you you would think, you know, and I didn't want to say nothing because I didn't know how she really felt about it. She was embarrassed about it. You know, it's not everybody that gets abducted by ugly and surprised a UFO. And it's not a, and she's been through everything. She, you know, all the media is me, media clinches and all that. She's seen a lot of stuff in her little life. And, uh, you know, it, it's just amazing that anybody can stand up through it. Now, in your particular case, did the media, create some nasty rumors or do things in the coverage of your experience in your life that was negative and false? They did, some of them. I tried not to let it bother me. I tried just to turn the other cheek. And, but there was times that, you know, you just get, you just had enough. Enough is enough. I know I left here one day, and one of them was a National Enquirer. They wrote some old bull story. And I said, you know, I know everybody knows they're the Enquirer, and everybody's going to don't believe nothing they say. So I got to thinking, I'm not going to let them get away with this. So I wrote them a letter, mailed it. Back in, you didn't have computers, mailed it to them, and wanted an apology in them for them to redo it and they wouldn't do it. So I got in my car and drove down there and hand delivered a letter. So uh, I was sitting in West Palm Beach two days later with it. And they, of course, they had me thrown out of there. That's fine, though. You know, I, there's just some things I won't let people get away with. Did you ever feel compelled to have a PR agent or a lawyer work with you to deal with all this? I, I had considered a lawyer. But, you know, I'm just no poor country boy that works for a living, and lawyers are high, high maintenance, so, uh, or most of them are. And uh, they, the court sure not going to appoint one to you if you don't, if you hadn't broke, done a crime or nothing. I don't want a court appointed attorney anyway. But I did have a good friend that was an attorney, and I would call him, and he would advise me every now and then. He said, just leave them alone. So you were never offered any money by the tabloids, and you never went seeking any payment from them? No, sir. I didn't want no money. I can make my own money. And a lot of people say, well, you're writing it. You wrote this book for the money. No, I didn't write it for the money. I wrote it to document my story, my life, on what happened to me. The book has a proof in it. Now, I would, I, like I told somebody the other day, if you don't believe me, get this book and read it. It's documented, stand up in a court of law. It's got polygraph test in it. It's got boy stress test in it. It's got documented witnesses, not just one or two, but several eyewitnesses in it. It's got a, a hypnosis. It's got any kind of documentation you want. And if you still don't believe it, you know, when you get through, then you, you're not open-minded at all. <laughs> Listen, let me ask you here about the voice stress analysis and the polygraph tests. Tell us something about that. Well, they just asked me if I'd take one. I said, yeah, I don't have a problem with it. We sat down. It didn't take long to take them. They did the uh, voice stress test. Uh, I went with Charlie to uh, Chicago because I wanted to talk to uh, Betty Hill. She, 
uh, had been abducted. And I, I, I don't know, for some reason, I just wanted to talk to her. So they had a talk show, and I agreed to fly down there. I never did go on a talk show, I don't think. But I did get to meet Betty Hill, and I actually went to her home and stayed with her for about four days, and we talked. And I wanted to know how she handled all this and all. So we went up to a mountain where she's had sightings and all. I never seen nothing, but, uh, you know, we did get some good visiting. And the reason I wanted to talk to her, back when Betty and Barney Hill got abducted, that was a mixed marriage. You didn't hear that back in the 60s back then. It just didn't happen. And if they sure didn't want no publicity on their sale. And that's the reason I wanted to do it, because I didn't think they did it for the publicity, because that would have been bad publicity for them. So I, I did. I really enjoyed being with her. He'd been dead for a while, I guess, either that or he left. You didn't see anything at the time when you went looking with uh, Betty, but have you seen or had any other experiences since then? And can you comment a bit on uh, whether or not you think you may have had any implants? Oh, there's no doubt in my mind I had an implant, and it's in the book, and it's in the section under bud hypnosis. And uh, it was a, that was a violent, violent deal. Now, the first uh, abduction that I went through, I, I don't think they really meant too much harm, but I think I've had an implant for years just to keep up. I don't know why they would put an implant in you, maybe just to find you or something. RFID, I guess. We got more to come with Calvin Parker and Gene and Randall. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. When you use public Wi-Fi, hackers and identity thieves can see anything you do online. Embarrassing photos, your web history, even your passwords. That's why I use private internet access to encrypt my internet connection for less than 10 cents a day. Sign up now at privateinternetaccess.com, and in just a few minutes, you'll be browsing anonymously and only sharing what you want to share. Privateinternetaccess.com. It's time to protect your online privacy. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. I started fighting the IRS over 40 years ago when they tried to seize my mother's house. I sued the IRS and won. I beat the IRS then, and I've been beating them ever since. I wrote the book on tax debt settlement, and I've helped thousands of people deal with tax problems they thought might never be solved. I can help you too. If you owe taxes you can't pay, don't wait another day. There's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to my website, danpilla.com. That's danpilla.com, danpilla.com. For USA Radio News, I'm Wendy King. At his funeral in Washington, D.C., people are remembering Senator John McCain. USA's Rick Vincent reports. Former President George W. Bush, McCain's one-time campaign rival. In the end, I got to enjoy one of life's great gifts, the friendship of John McCain, and I'll miss him. Former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger. The world will be lonelier without John McCain. Former Senator Joseph Lieberman. Godspeed, dear friend. May angels sing you to your eternal home. And McCain's daughter, Megan. My father is gone, but I know his life, and I know it was great because it was good. Also speaking, former President Barack Obama and McCain's son, Jimmy McCain, who read his father's favorite poem, The Requiem. For USA Radio News, I'm Rick Vincent. You're listening to USA Radio News. Are you struggling with addiction or alcohol problems? If you're depressed, drinking, and using drugs, you may need help. And the Affordable Care Act guarantees coverage of substance abuse. I knew I could get myself out of this. I just needed some hope and some help. I took the first step to recovery when I made the call. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment with someone who cares. Call 800-854-1055. 800-854-1055. 
1-800-227-7055. I feel like I'm losing control. I'm afraid I'll lose my job or even my family. Call now for hope and help with proven gentle recovery programs. I never thought that I could be somebody who didn't drink and use drugs. I'm in recovery, getting the help I need. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment with someone who cares. Call 800-854-1055. 800-854-1055. 800-854-1055. Don't become dependent on the medical system. Get and stay healthy naturally with Extendivite. Metals in the liver cause peroxides to get dumped into the bloodstream. Peroxides do more damage than free radicals to the arteries, and the LDL has no protection from peroxides, causing the LDL to get stuck in the arteries, creating a potential blockage. Extendivite slowly chelates the metals away from the liver so it can dispose of what was meant to be a harmless process, peroxide. Extendivite 7 Herbs has a job to strengthen the organs and circulatory highway. Can you afford a heart attack? Extendivite is available in capsule or liquid form for just $69.95 for a two-month supply. To get started, call 1-877-928-8822. That's 1-877-928-8822. Or visit heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extend Ovite. Hi, this is Bryce Abel. I'm the producer of Dark Skies, the co-author of AD After Disclosure, and you are listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. Just to let you know, we've got the second radio show out there for you. It's called After the Paracast. It could be post-game. It could be separate discussions, separate interviews. Fascinating thing. It's worth it by itself, but we also offer the ad-free version of this show. And you get that and other features included in the Paracast Plus. And we just recently had a big sale on Paracast Plus. We'll have more special offers. But if you want to know more, go to plus.theparacast.com, plus.theparacast.com for information and sign up. The sign up is a little kind of difficult because you got to join our forums. We're going to simplify that in the near future. But right now, if you want to get involved in Paracast Plus, go to plus.theparacast.com. Calvin Parker is joining us. We're talking about the aftermath of his case. He takes voice stress analysis. He passes it. He takes polygraph. He passes it. He undergoes hypnotic regression, but having mentioned that, let's get more into that here. Now, just to let you know, I don't know if you've read about it, but hypnotic regression is kind of controversial. But what made you seek out having this done, or did Bud Hopkins come to you? No, I seeked it out. Like I say, I was missing this time, and he had written a book on missing time. I still hadn't read the book. Uh, but I knew I had some time missing, and I wanted to talk to him to see what it was about. So the conversation led into me being hypnotized in his motel room in Florida. And Again, it, let's make this clear. You remembered the basic details of this experience by yourself. Nobody hypnotized you to bring it out. This is something you lived with. So he is talking to you how many years later? This was in 93, 94 that I got hypnotized from 73 to 94, 93, 20 years, I guess. Okay, so you lived this for 20 years or so, and you undergo hypnotic regression. We don't need the steps, but it would be nice to know for people analyzing the value of it, but what is there that you remembered with this enhancement? Well, actually, I remember all the, details just out of my memory what happened but uh for an example all right let me let me go back to him hypnotizing one thing that i didn't remember when uh we were at the first deduction in 73 there was a car parked down there and i called the tag number out on the car and since then i've looked it up and uh it was a couple down there parking that night they got married he died and she's in a nursing home, don't want nobody to know where, where she is or who she is. So I'm going to honor that. So that's how strong hypnosis was to help you remember to recall. Even now, 
all this stuff that uh, is coming out, like uh, I, I don't read where he hypnotized me until I remember it on my own. And I won't let nobody else tell me about it. But as I remember it, I go in there and I try to read a little bit. And it's right there. It's key on it, except it's in more details than what I remembered. So it's pretty strong, I guess, if you need to pull out some small facts out of the deal. It's a fact finder what it is. Okay, so in Pascagoula, The Closest Encounter, my story, your book, what is there that surprised and or frightened you about what you remembered after Bud Hopkins put you under hypnotic regression? Well, the night of the missing time, these uh, they came back. And uh, there was some kind of something in my nasal passage, and they tried to dig it out. And I know I was bloody, way bloody that night. From uh, It was all over my shirt. I had on a white T-shirt. And when I got home, my wife said, where did all that blood come from? I said, oh, just from a fish, I, you know, from fish. But, you know, I, I didn't want to tell nobody. But she tried to dig us out of my nose and went up through my mouth with her fingers and pulling it out. And it got in pain, but I was able to fight that night. So me and her had got into it and I banged her wall. If it was a her, I banged her head up against the wall till she started bleeding herself. And uh, it ended up still ended up bad for me though, because you just can't do that. The more big ugly ones are coming there and get you when you do. Okay, so I'm a little confused here. We're talking about a second encounter now. Yes. Or sir. We, how long after the first one uh, did the did did the second one take place? Twenty years. So but around I, 1993. Right. Is that why you went to Bud Hopkins, or did you even know about it before you were hypnotized? I had a feeling. I didn't know the facts about it. But this helped bring out the facts. Now, I hadn't read this uh, in the book yet. I hadn't got to that part in the book. So I'm planning on, I, I'm starting to remember now. And I uh, probably when I get off here tonight, I just got a book in. I'm going to sit down there and read it because I had gave all mine away. So so this, Im- this implant then, um you're saying that you believe you got it from the first experience back in 73, and then in 1993, they tried to remove it. Were they successful at removing it? Yes, sir, they were. I was, uh, all my life, I've had nosebleeds. Even as a uh, kid, you know, I would be going somewhere, my nose would just start bleeding. And they would, I mean, it would bleed, bleed. And I noticed they was getting a lot worse up around that time. And uh, I'd always sent something, but I just didn't really know. Okay. Do you think then, because you're kind of suggesting it, that maybe E.T. or whatever it was, was looking at you, following you before your first experience? It's hard to say, but uh, it's a possibility. I'm not going to say one way or another because I don't want to lie about it. Okay, so after the first experience, you recalled having this implant? Yes, sir. Okay, I want to clarify that. Did you ever have an effort made to x-ray to see if they could see what was going on in there, what might be present? Well, no, I was scared to because I don't know why I was afraid to. I think it was something that uh, they had put in my mind where I had a great fear of messing with it or doing anything. And that's one of the reasons I come up missing through all this. And none of that part's not even in the book. I mean, I'm just, it's just, there was that fear there that I didn't need to mess with nothing that, you know, had been done. You had some medical procedures done for your own health uh, at some point. Was that between the time that this implant was uh, put in and taken out, or when was that exactly? Uh, Well, this uh, 2010, I had a stroke. Then I had two open-heart surgeries, and uh, 
the stroke is worse of all. You eventually get over your open heart surgeries a little bit, but I still can't get around good and all because of that stroke. And, uh, you know, and it's kind of like I told some somebody on the show the other night. They said, well, why now? And, then, of course, I went through and explained one of the reasons. But the other reason, I got an expiration date on my head right now, and I want everybody to uh, know the truth about what's going on. Well, you're too young to die. Oh, not really. I mean, I've been there. I died in 2012 for a while. A clinical death. Do you have any memories? Let's just drop into that for a second. Any memories of the time that you were briefly dead? No, not. Felt pretty good. I just a lot of sleep, I guess. I, you know, I don't really have no memories of going to no light or nothing like that, like everybody does. But <sighs> I was clinically dead, though. Sure, sure. Calvin Parker. Pascagoula, The Closest Encounter, My Story is the book from Philip Mantle's Flying Disc Press. Co-host is J. Randall Murphy. I'm Gene Steinberg. You're in the Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. Do you need a website? Well, you can get a great deal on hosting services with Namecheap's legendary coupon code. They're offering substantial hosting discounts on shared hosting, business hosting, VPS hosting, reseller hosting, and even dedicated servers. Namecheap is preferred by millions. It's backed by a money-back guarantee. Use the coupon code LEGENDARY to cash in on the special deal at Namecheap.com, Namecheap.com. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream, a dream that turns out to be a nightmare because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. This is Fred. Uh, hi, I'm Fred. Fred's a repeater. I tend to repeat. Fred has a business. I do have a business. And a problem. Fred repeats the same tired advertising over and over, and now it doesn't work. Over and over. But Fred is about to see a vision. I'm seeing a vision. Advertising on the Genesis Communications Network is the smart way for Fred to reach his potential customers with the most affordable national advertising rates, period. Get started today with GCN, the Genesis Communications Network. Just email advertise at GCNlive.com. It's a no-brainer. A Big Berkey water filter is the one you need, period. You need a water filter that removes chlorine, fluoride, pharmaceuticals, BPA, and other endocrine disruptors, pesticides, bacteria, viruses, and much more, right? And does it all at only two cents per gallon. Get the original and most trusted name in gravity water filtration, Big Berkey. And now GCN listeners receive 5% off ceramic filter systems using code GCN. Call or click 1-877-99-BERKEY or BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. That's 1-877-99-BERKEY. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists. Get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow. A new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, 
dollars, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-318-4349 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-318-4349. Again, that's 800-318-4349. Some of the best sounds you'll ever hear are generic, safe, effective, even money saving, just like FDA approved generic drugs. Even if they don't come in the exact same color or shape as their brand name equivalents, they have the same key ingredients and go through a rigorous review process. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist today and visit FDA.gov slash generic drugs. Generics are safe, effective, and can save you money. You'll like the sound of that. Hi, this is Don Ecker, and you are tuned into the Paracast. Let me tell you what, you're going to hear stuff here that you probably won't hear anywhere else. Hear that, George Snorri? By the way, Randall, we had some questions in our forum. Anything related to what we've discussed so far? We have a question from Cosmonaut who asks, was there any communication to, to you or Charles from the entities? So you mentioned something about maybe some telepathic communication. Is, can you go into that in any more detail? Well, it's not really much to go into. Now, I can't speak for Charlie. But uh, on my part, the only thing I could hear was them mumbling between each other, just a low mumble. But on the part where she communicated to me was, uh, you know, there's nothing to be afraid of. We're not going to harm you. And it was just like she had said it, but I absorbed it and she didn't say it. She just thought it, I guess, maybe sent it to my mind. But uh, I don't know. Cosmonaut also asks, did government agents interview you after the incident? And if so, what was the conversation? They did. We went to Kaysor just a couple of days after the incident, Kaysor Air Force Base. And they had uh, the minutes is in the uh, book, but they had several people to interview us. And they was really nice. They was real good to us. Then they turned around and let us go. And as far as I know, they hadn't tried to intervene any since. Now, I get a feeling sometime they're watching, and especially here lately, I just got a feeling that they're kind of watching, but I don't know that for sure. And Cosmonaut also asks, have you or did Charles have any later UFO or paranormal experiences? And you, you've talked about that to some degree. We're hearing about the second encounter in 1993. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. Uh, like I say, I think it was just to come get whatever they had implanted in me out. And they did what they were supposed to, and they got it out. And that was the violent taking there because we actually got in a physical confrontation in there. Where did this happen? It happened in uh, on Cat Island in out of uh, Biloxi, Mississippi, or past Christiane. And were you driving, or how did this? Can you describe how it came to happen? That this uh, give us the blow by blow. In other words, oh well, I was in a boat. I, I was going fishing. I got my boat and I just went to the island while I was out there. It all happened. And that was the shocking part about it. I didn't realize when I woke up what had happened. I think they had knocked me back out or gave me something and knocked me out right then because, you know, I had no clue. I just knew that I was missing about 10, 12 hours of my life right there and I wanted to know where it went. So this didn't actually happen in the boat, but actually after you got to the island and you were on the island for some time. Yes, sir. That's true. Okay. And was it daytime or nighttime? Oh, uh, well, it was daytime when I was, when I started missing the time, I guess, because I was thinking about eating my lunch and I never did eat it. And then, but it was when I come to out there, it was probably three, four o'clock in the morning. I still don't wear a watch to this day. Do you remember seeing a craft this time before 
being abducted or do you just sort of recall all of this uh, being in the craft and and undergoing this uh, procedure to have the implant removed? No, I don't remember seeing one. I do remember being inside and getting this implant moved. I think what they do, they probably knock you out with some kind of knockout shot or something because I had the same kind of mark on my arm that I had uh, back in 73. What kind of mark is that? It's just a a puncher mark. There was a big puncher mark on your arm. Look like you drove on. Just say a meat thermometer into it. I wasn't going to be an idiot this time and tell nobody because I was there by myself. And it would have been foolish for me to tell somebody because they'd say, well, you're just seeking publicity. And that would have done. And I wasn't. Did you ever go out and do lectures for money? No. Okay. Lord, no. You you woke up and your shirt was all bloody, you were saying. Right. Do you still have that shirt? No, huh? I don't have it. When we got flooded down here in uh, 2005, when the hurricane come, everything that was in this house got wiped out. Oh, so, so. this, the house... You had it up to that point. The reason I was asking is that, you know, if you had been drugged, for example, and you had a whole bunch of blood on your shirt, nowadays they could have done uh, testing on that to see if there was any residual chemical right. in your blood, right? So th- this was just a, I thought, well, it's a long shot, but it's worth asking. And, you know, I really regret that I didn't get into something like that after that because, uh, that would have went a long ways to proving it because I probably had its blood and my blood on me. So, and I call it it, uh, hers or his or whatever it was. Where do you think they're from? That I don't know. I believe myself. Now, I can't prove this and don't know, but I think they probably travel interdimensional. I always d- will believe that there's a dimension right here by us and that we can't see into that you can slip in and out of and travel in and move to a different time or a different place in it. But I don't know about that. I don't know. I'm no scientist and I don't know that that's for true or not. Have you ever been to uh, an abductee group where you talk to other people and share your experiences? No, sir. I hadn't here lately. I've been invited to one, but I, you know, I, I've been, doubting about filling the paperwork out and going. Let me ask you a question here. Your stroke, how did it debilitate you and have you mostly recovered? No, I'm still recovering. Uh, My left leg and my left arm, if I go to put on some clothes or something, I have to lay them on the floor or step into them. And it's just hard to dress yourself. And as far as getting out and moving a lot, I can't do it. I try to put on a show like I can walk around and get around. But, you know, you can't. Like I say, I'd rather have another heart attack and another stroke any day. We've got another question in our forum. This one's uh, from um, Sand. And he's commenting on something that the debunkers have said, which is that there was uh, some supposed to be uh, a bridge caretaker or some security people, something to that effect in the uh, yards across the river w- with access and a direct view to where you guys would have been, and yet nobody's seen anything unusual. Um, well, yeah, I can answer that pretty easy. Right after this happened, the night that it happened, the sheriff department went over to uh, – talk to the guy on the bridge. They had a guy in there to raise the bridge up in case a big ship come by and needed under. Well, he was in a big leather recliner laid back asleep, and what he'd do is listen to the radio or listen for them to blow a horn, and he'd get up. So they caught him sound asleep, and they lied not to got him awake. And as far right across the uh, river from us, the Coast Guard station, they were uh, probably on our sleep, but let me tell you what happened. There's two fishermen that seen something under the water. They called the Coast Guard, 
the Coast Guard sent six people out, one of their cutters, to go check it. They actually took a some kind of stick or something they carry on their boat to grab dock lines with and bumped it and got to see it. They had six credible witnesses right there, plus the two fishermen about stuff like that. So, you know, it, it's plenty of documentation of witnesses there. You were saying that there were other people who saw this light? Yes, sir. Really? Can you tell us a little more about that? Just to clarify, because uh, you know, when a lot of people see the debunking side of things or the skeptical side, they don't mention that there are any other witnesses. Where were these other witnesses exactly? Well, number one, there was a parole officer, law enforcement officer and a preacher coming over the bridge. And they seen they seen the craft. Uh, the Coast Guard cutter actually found one underwater over there. The craft. Uh, it was several more. Then uh, it was uh, a preacher from Peru, and I think Philip's been talking to him. Has come out. He's seen it. Hang hang on a second. There's a the Coast Guard tracked a UFO underwater. Is that? Yes, sir. It's documented in the book. Like I say, we put all this documentation in there. Alvin, Gene, Randall, you're in the Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. We also have swag. You know, we have all these exclusive Paracast things that you can buy. We've got like, I guess, 60 or so different items. And entails t-shirts, sleeves for notebook computers, iPad cases, mouse pads, the Paracast jumbo tote bag, all sorts of t-shirts and jackets and stuff like that for men and women. We have a Paracast aluminum water bottle. All this stuff, you go to store.theparacast.com, store.theparacast.com. What makes it special is that the items are the best quality, you know, great T-shirts, fabrics, and they have our official logo on them. That's what makes them special in multiple sizes and colors. We even have stuff for children, stuff for women, stuff for men. We have all sorts of sizes, like small up to X large. A lot of good stuff. That's the swag from the Paracast. You go to store.theparacast.com, stop by, and take a shopping tour. Message and data rates may apply. Individual results may vary. See website for details. But hey, I'm buying a huge flat screen TV so I can finally see it without my glasses. Why not just get LASIK at the LASIK Vision Institute? That's what I'm doing. Uh, My glasses and contacts are a pain. I'd love to finally get rid of these, but who can afford LASIK? You can. Because the LASIK Vision Institute is offering dramatically low prices and an absolutely free consultation. Just text DO33 to 350350. The LASIK Vision Institute has already performed over a million procedures. They use the latest FDA-approved LASIK technology that helps the majority of patients achieve 20-20 vision for a fraction of what others charge. Better vision, better value. The LASIK Vision Institute. Make this the year you finally get LASIK. For a free consultation plus an extra 20% discount, text two three three to 350350. You'll see for free if LASIK is right for you. That's DO33 to 350350. Welcome back to the Paracast. The gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. So Calvin Parker says that this was all documented in the book, what we were referring to here. Would you continue? Uh, Yes, sir. That's like I said, when I tell everybody they don't believe, buy the book. It will stand up in a court of law. It's got credible witnesses in it. You got the Coast Guard. You got eyewitnesses from driving across the bridge. You got a parole officer. You got a preacher. The bridge tender didn't see it because he was sleeping on his job. You got that couple that was parked out there. He's deceased now. She's in a nursing home, but she's seen it, but she's not going to come forward because she don't want any publicity. Back then, 90% of your people 
didn't want the publicity of seeing all this. And it's like I said in the book, you know, I don't care if people believe it or not. That's up to them. I know what happened. I know it's there. And I, I, it's a fact to me. And if they don't believe it, they can buy the book and read it and see. But I think once they read it, they'll be open-minded anyhow. Let's point out one thing here, too. That you write a book about anything related to UFOs. Only a few people ever have bestsellers making a lot of money. So I don't think that Calvin Parker is going to enrich himself by this book. I mean, it could sell a lot, and he deserves it. He's had health problems and everything. So certainly he deserves the extra cash. But we're not expecting miracles for him. No, uh, I didn't do this for the money. What money I've got, I've made before this book come out, and I still haven't received nothing on the book yet. You know, it's all in the making if I get any. Well, then you must, but you must care, though, Calvin, be, whether people believe you, because otherwise, why write the book? If you don't, if it's not about the money, it's about getting the message out. So, you know, it must matter to you. And I'd like to know why it matters so much to you. Can you tell us more about how you feel about the incident and, and why it's so important for you to get the message out? The people that's going to believe you is going to believe you, regardless of what you say or what you do. The people that don't believe you will never believe you. Then you're going to have those in the middle, and they can be persuaded one way or another. You know, they're going to go to what sounds good to them. But the reason I wanted to get this message out, I have never talked to my family about it. I've never talked to my friends about it. Never talked to anyone about it. But I didn't want to just leave them. I didn't want to leave this old world and not tell people what happened. You know, I owe it to my family and my friends to tell them a little bit about this, what's going on. And that's the, that's the reason for the book. It, it's like Philip said, it's your legacy. Yeah, I, I want people to believe it because everybody wants people to believe when they tell them something because that's just the way that it is. But I'm not going to put my soul up and go to hell because I'm going to sit here and tell a lie about something. Well, that sounds very honorable. And you do come across as being very sincere during the interview. So what do you hope to get out of these sort of experiences here now that you're sort of wrapping things up, so to speak? You've alluded to this a few times. What, what do you really hope to see come out of this? There's a lot of people that's had legitimate experiences, and I want them to be able to open up and talk about them and not have to hide behind them all their life and to run from this stuff to keep from being ridiculed and all. I want people to understand you just don't talk talk about people and run them down because there's something different about them. That's true in any case, whether it's a UFO or you a little different than anybody else. There's a, there's a point that's got to come across somewhere. Now, have you interacted much with other people who have undergone similar experiences? I've just started here lately, and uh, people uh, try to tell me their story, and, uh, and I, I sit down and listen. And then I'm going to have this book signing in Pascagoula. they putting it on uh, there's a lot of people coming from all over to that. It's the first book signing that I'm going to do. And I want to be able to sit in there and talk to them and let them, you know, ask questions and answer questions and get to meet a lot of these people around here. And it's every day is something different come up in this, you know, different witnesses and things like that. And you're going to see a little of that with something new. but. Uh, you know, every day is something better coming out of it. You still there? I'm still here, of course. That helps, of course. Have you ever seen anything else weird since then, other than the first abduction and the one that you remembered? No, sir, I hadn't. Uh, you know, I've seen some weird things, but that was mostly in New Orleans on Bourbon Street. But no, I hadn't <laughs> looked up in the sky to see anything weird. They, uh, 
Well, certainly in New Orleans, I guess you see where things... I've never been there, and it's kind of interesting here. But I had a chance to work in Louisiana. This is back in the late 60s. And I was about to take the job. And I don't recall why I didn't. I think, in retrospect, I should have. That would have been real fun. I was working at a rock and roll radio station in the Quad Cities of Alabama, Muscle Shoals, Sheffield, Tuscumbia, Florence. You're familiar with it? I am. Right. And Muscle Shoals, I didn't realize, had that famous recording studio where so many people like Aretha Franklin recorded. Big big mistake. Now, your cohort in this original enterprise, Mr. Hickson, did he ever report any other sightings? If he did, I didn't hear about them or didn't know about them. Uh, after I left the coast, we would see each other sometime, but we would never talk about this. And, uh, you know, it was just a pass and repass deal. But uh, I'm sure he, I'm sure he probably did. He had a little rock he carried around with him. He said when he rubbed it, he could feel their presence. But it's like me carrying a Bible around. When I carry it around and open it, I can feel the presence of God with it. Okay, so that's a feeling. Right. Right. I'm not saying it's not real. It's a feeling. So in his case, it's a feeling. And of course, having undergone such a traumatic experience, can we even assume the experience is real? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I don't know. Uh, I know mine's real. I don't know about Charlie's. I mean, I'm assuming that I know it is what happened out there because uh, I was with him. I know he got abducted. I know I know that he really believes, and I know it changed his life because he went from not wanting to talk about it to all he wanted to do was talk about it. And uh, that's one reason I got to where I wouldn't see him because when we seen each other, all he wanted, he would want to talk about it, and I'd just turn around and walk off. I'm going to ask you something about that in a moment, but one thing is, did you gain any more insights into what happened to you by talking to him? No. It's kind of like reading this Bud, Bud Hopkins hypnosis session. I didn't want to gain any more through that. Uh, no, I really didn't. I, I had gained any insights at all, not through him or through nothing else. Actually, up until here lately, I've tried not to read nothing on it, tried not to watch no news with anything like this on it. Now, I got into the uh, this ancient alien here lately, and then uh, there was a special on cattle mutilation not too long ago, and I watched that. But this was all after the fact. What do you think the purpose of these abductions are? And that's a question we're going to hold in abeyance for one more segment. We'll find out in the next segment and the following segments where that's going. We've got Calvin Parker. We've got J. Randall Murphy. We've got Gene Steinberg, don't we? Yeah, we sure do. More to come. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> Attack of the Rockoids has been well received by critics and readers alike. It's a -a thrill-a-minute story you'll never forget. A former U.S. military intelligence officer is haunted by intense dreams about a beautiful woman pleading for his help after a terrible battle in outer space. But the dreams turn out to be true and thrust him into a telepathic love affair with a woman whose faraway planet is intent on destroying the Earth. And now the gripping tale continues in The Coming of the Protectors. It's the second book of the Rockoids trilogy, a galaxy-spanning adventure that pits our hapless heroes against powerful, fanatical enemies that threaten the lives of freedom-loving beings everywhere. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors, classic science fiction at its best, available now. For more details, visit rockoids.com. That's R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S dot com. 
It's been said, any society is only three missed meals away from chaos. Those times may be near. Think about it. Our country faces multiple terrorist threats and aggressions from Russia and North Korea. Social unrest and violent marches yet again may lead to looting of stores and city shutdowns. And our crumbling infrastructure leaves our power grid vulnerable to long-term outages from a single cyber attack. When the chaos from any one of these threats arises, the government knows it can't provide during a widespread national emergency. That's why you need your own plan for self-reliance. That's where My Patriot Supply comes in. Get a four-week survival food supply for only $99. That includes breakfast, lunches, and dinners. Order online at preparewithgcn.com. $99 bucks for four weeks of survival food that tastes like homemade cooking and lasts up to 25 years from My Patriot Supply. Get your kits today at preparewithgcn.com. Free shipping is included. Preparewithgcn.com. Healthcare reform is confusing, but whether it's finding an affordable insurance plan, keeping your doctor, or being able to afford needed prescriptions, navigating the healthcare system has become a challenge. Control your own healthcare costs and choices with Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is not insurance. It is an association of self-pay patients who unite with like-minded people to share the cost of each other's medical needs. Neighbor helping neighbor. Learn more now by going to libertyoncall.org. That's libertyoncall.org. Have you checked your Google search results lately? Search results are usually the first impression that people form of you or your business. So make sure that they create a positive impression with ReputationDefender.com. What the Internet says about you can have a big impact on your life and your livelihood, even if it's not true. Fortunately, you can now control how you look online and in online search results with ReputationDefender.com. Call 800-831-0771 now. That's 800-831-0771 for your free reputation. Analysis. If you have negative material from an ex-employee, upset patient, or former client, newspaper article, legal issue, social media, or other source showing up in your search results, you can combat it with ReputationDefender.com. Our dedicated experts in patented technology can help make your online search results look their best. Call 800-831-0771 to learn more. 800-831-0771. That's 800-831-0771. Or visit ReputationDefender.com. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists. Get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow, a new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. The, we have the Echo. That's a good superhero. You ever think about that, the Randall? Echo. The superhero. Look, the Echo. Up in the sky, he's surrounding you with sound. No, it doesn't work very well. Calvin Parker is continuing. There was a question asked at the end of our last segment. Should we go into that? Yeah. You asked if I had any uh, insight on what all this might be about. I think we kind of like uh, we laboratory test dogs, a human race or monkeys or something like that. I think we like a big test for them. Uh, I don't think it's they're here to really hurt us or do us any good one way or another, but I think they need to know more about us and what makes us function or what makes us go on. So I feel like that's what a lot of these deductions are about. Okay, now people know that I'm I'm a bit of a stickler for details and somewhat skeptical, so I hope you don't mind me uh, digging a little bit here. Go right ahead. Right the secret tape, right? It uh, on the secret tape, you say in it that you passed out, right? And, and that uh, that's the first time you ever passed out in your life. But later, you were saying that you only said that to try to dissuade people from talking to you about it. 
But if that's the case, why would you say this in private? In private, right. Yeah, and I see where you're coming from. And uh, But you know, I guess in a way I did pass out when it first happened, when they gave me that first shot. I know what was going on. I wasn't at myself. Neither was Charlie or nobody else going to be at their self when something like that happens. But you're right in there. And, you know, I'm going to hang with my story in here to the end. I, I did pass out, but it wasn't all the way out. It's like a comatose thing. You can, you can see, but you couldn't move. There's another thing, too, uh, and maybe this was something that Charlie experienced, but not you. There was, uh, you mentioned kind of a little box, but there's also in the story, there's a thing that's more like a, an, an eye. Was that something Charlie saw, or do you remember the same thing, too? No, I don't remember nothing about no eye. I remember that little box about the size of a deck of cards. Now, I, I do remember hearing Charlie uh, tell, Dr. Heine, that it was like a, and I was thinking uh, well, like a real eyeball or a camera eye. I, you know, I was thinking that to myself because I was trying to absorb some of what he said in there. But really, right then, I didn't hear if I absorbed any of it or not. Were you aware of Char- uh, Charlie at the same time when you were both on the craft? Or was this, or do you both have separate stories where you've taken into separate rooms? Oh, we was taken into separate rooms. From the time I left, I don't remember seeing Charlie on the craft. The next time I seen Charlie was out on the pier again. And then, uh, but he had said he had went on and that was good enough for me. So when you got floated into the craft, do you remember you two going your own separate ways through a different well, corridor or something? How, how did that work? Well, I don't know. I know that when I first went in the door, they made a left turn with me and then a right turn. So I'm not for sure when he went in, they might have made a right turn and then a left turn, took us in separate rooms there. I don't know about that for sure at all. I just know where I went in there. Did you go in one after the other or together at the same time? I'm assuming we was in there uh, one after the other. Interesting. Uh, it, it, it's really hard to say without being able to turn around and look and see him. It's hard to say. So the, you kind of ended up on the craft at the same time, but you were taken in kind of in a row, one after the other, yes, into sir. separate rooms. Okay. Yeah, that that's that's right. You know, uh, it it would have been easier on us. I think if uh, we'd been in the same room. But I don't know if they did that for their security or ours, or maybe they just didn't have the room in there. I I never seen a table where I was, but I'm sure it had to be that one table in there that they laid me on. Okay, so you're certain here, and this is a question that will be asked, that this experience was entirely a physical one, that what you remember, either consciously or through hypnotic regression, hypnotic regression is precisely how it went down, or do you think that maybe the aliens implanted, if there are aliens, something to cover up a genuine experience? No, I, it's a physical law. Uh, I don't believe they tried to cover up nothing because, number one, they probably know human nature better than we do. And back then, the last thing you want to do was tell everybody you was abducted by an alien because... I just can't see that happen. It'd be like I'm telling a ghost got you and run off with you or something. So I don't think they tried to cover up nothing because I knew nobody would probably believe it. And for years, you know, from what I understand, watching here lately, Dr. Honey, you know, where they cover up a lot of stuff. That's not what I mean. I'm talking about here, Calvin, whether the experience you had that you remember so well, is the experience or perhaps the force behind that et whatever altered your memory so you remember that but something else happened i don't believe so i know i remember being in there i physically remember being in there and i physically remember what happened i just couldn't do nothing about it 
So now nah, I'm going to say that, it, it, you know, it happened. I don't believe they tried to cover it up in any way. Did you ever think here, if you could even remember your a kid, as they say, at 19, to ask, what the heck are you doing here? No, I'm too scared to ask that, because that's pretty frightening. It's like you sitting in your house watching TV and somebody kicked a door down, come in there and get you and take you out to their van and give you a medical examination and throw you back out where you was. That's home invasion any way you get it. They done kidnapped you and run off with you. And that's a pretty scary deal. Yeah, you're, so you're not looking at this as like all warm and fuzzy space brother kind of stuff. This is this is some pretty serious, uh, weird, just another species on the planet. And, you know, they look at us like we might look at a, you know, a, a, a monkey in a cage or something. Yeah, that's not, it's nothing warm and fuzzy about it to me. And a lot of people try to make it be kind of warm and fuzzy and say there's something they want you to know and tell you, but they wanted me to know, you know, they should have just told me. I could have felt a lot better about them. I'm going to ask you a question here, which will continue to our next segment, Calvin. And that is, do you feel you were specially selected, that Charles was specially selected, or were you in the wrong place at the wrong time? We'll have that answer in our next segment. With Calvin, Jean, and Randall, you're in the Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. If you like alkaline water or know someone that does, you're going to love the Dillon Living Water Bottle. It creates alkaline water on the go while reducing plastic waste and saving you money. Made with surgical grade stainless steel, the Dillon Bottle increases the pH up to 9 to deliver both alkaline and antioxidant water anywhere you want it. Alkaline water is healthier, tastes better, and can even boost energy. The Dillon Bottle makes it easy and affordable to be healthy and achieve optimal hydration. Get your Dillon Bottle today at DYLN.co. That's DYLN.co. Are you living your passion? Are you pumped to go to work because you get to talk about or work with or do the things that interest you the most? Is working, playing, and relaxing one and the same? As long as you're working for someone else, you'll never be living entirely true to yourself and your passion. I'm Pharmacist Keith. Let me show you how you can work around your current schedule, create the extra income so you can live your passion. Visit radio.recordedvideo.com. That's radio.recordedvideo.com. Radio.recordedvideo.com. For USA Radio News, I'm Wendy King. President Trump confirms off-the-record comments that he made to Bloomberg News, saying that he planned to make trade talks with Canada, quote, so insulting that they're not going to be able to make a deal. In North Carolina, the president did not deny the comments. But I said in the end it's okay. Because at least Canada knows how I feel. So it's fine. The talks with Canada have been hung up on issues related to cars, agriculture, and other sectors. Canadian Foreign Minister Christia Freeland said there's no deal. The government of Canada will not sign an agreement unless it's good for Canada and good for Canadians. A federal judge has turned down requests from Texas and other states to end the DACA program, which shields younger illegal immigrants from being deported. You're listening to USA Radio News. There's no question you need omega-3s. But which form should you take? Fish oil or krill oil? Scientists have debated this for years. Luckily, there's a new solution to satisfy everyone. It's called Krill Omega 50 Plus. It combines ultra-pure fish oil and joint-soothing krill oil together in just one tiny pill. It's so powerful, it can promote the health of your heart and your arteries. And if that wasn't enough, it can also boost your joint comfort in just days. We're so sure Krill Omega 
Omega 50 Plus will work for you. We'll even send you a free bottle to put to the test. The debate is over. It's not fish oil or krill oil. It's both. And now it's free. Just pay $4.95 for shipping and claim your free bottle. Call now. 1-800-399-6392. 1-800-399-6392. That's 1-800-399-6392. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-318-4349 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-318-4349. Again, that's 800-318-4349. This is Leslie Kane, and I'm with the Coalition for Freedom of Information, and you are listening to the Paracast. So, Calvin Parker, what about that? Were you selected deliberately, you think, or you were just there? No, I really feel like it uh, was probably selected. Now, I don't know why I feel that way, but... uh, I do feel like we was probably selected and been selected for a while. Now, why they would select two country boys, I don't know, but they did. Or maybe we was just there. I mean, we a big shipyard down from us that works on government ships and builds battleships and submarines and all that was just right there, too. And I thought there for a while, maybe it's something that they're working on, experimenting with, and they just using us for a guinea pig. That's uh, interesting. Uh, and I'm actually impressed that you thought that maybe there was another explanation to this besides some kind of an alien abduction. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, I did for a long time. I thought, well, you know, that they got this shipyard down there. Of course, they build drones and everything else now. They didn't back in. But I said, well, you know, they experimenting on some kind of craft. And uh, they having them a good old time just messing with me and Charlie. And if I find them, I'm going to put a whooping on them like they wouldn't believe. <laughs> and that's all. Uh, I thought about that a lot. Well, it wouldn't then, be the first time that the government has actually used people in uh, certain kinds of experiments. So it, it may be the case that you're on to something there. Yeah. You know, you never know. Maybe evidence would come out, you know, something. I had rather think it was something like that than I had from another world coming down here. The one thing I always wonder about UFO abductions, nothing personal on this why do we need so many? I think if ET wants to take specimens, test people, how many different types of people do they need to abduct and frighten and impact before it's enough? Well, it's like us, ex- again, experimenting on animals. There's thousands of them, you know, they experiment on just to keep trying. And why we do it, I don't know. I don't, it's not right. Animals, and I just got the feeling like this lately, animals has got a feelings just like uh, humans do. You know, they get fear, they're afraid, they, uh, you hurt their feelings, they pout. So it's hard to say. I know uh, my son passed away uh, here a few years ago. When he did, there's a little old dog come up outside and He was a stranger, you know, just a stray dog. We let him in and started feeding him. He was just a puppy, and I've got attached to him. So, and I didn't know what kind of feelings that they had, but there was days that I sat out 
and cry about that boy on the back porch, and he'd be out there with me, and it would upset him. And he's, matter of fact, he's sitting here in my lap right now. You know, when it comes to dogs, I kind of think a stray dog selects you. I kind of think the dog you end up with selects you. And I kind of feel that because of the dog we ended up with, we have a rescue Bichon that we picked up in San Diego about five and a half years ago. And they put up a profile of the dog where they kind of describe his or her personality. And my wife read this and said, that's our dog. And when he first met us, he knew that he was our dog. Yeah. And that that's the way this little fella was. He was uh, probably six weeks old, which would have put him born right there close to my son's birthday in March. He come up, we fed him. I figured he would go on. And then I noticed he come back and he was bringing that plate that we fed him on, standing up, jumping up and down in it. And, you know, how could you not take him a little something to eat out there? So we went back and fed him again. And then I got to doing some research on him. Now, he's supposed to be a water dog. Now, I love fishing. And uh, he's a uh, skippy from Japan or something. And he's supposed to like boats and all. And then uh, my son's birthday, he had made it with a dog across the road. And he had 18 puppies in on, on his birthday. And he's just been with me ever since. And he, he's a little blessing to me. I think as much as I do of him as I do anybody else. And he does me. He's a lot of company. I remember when I had that stroke laying up in bed, not moving, he'd come up there, he'd jump up in bed with me and lay right there on me. I mean, he, he just watched after me. And you can't forget loyalty like that. And, and I know they got feelings just like anybody else. They know. They've made a couple of movies about dogs in, in the last few years, actually, where one of them does just that. It's he runs to meet his his uh, owner at the train station when he gets off work. And one day the his owner just it doesn't get off the train because he he dies. And this dog just keeps going there every day for years to waiting for his owner to get off the train and it's fairly moving. There's another one called a dog's purpose, which is supposed to be pretty good. I haven't seen it yet though. Like I say, this little fella here, he's just as loyal as anything. And the way to get me riled up is mess with the little dog. I know we had a pit bulldog that lived on the same block. He come over here and jumped on this little fella outside in his front door. I grabbed that pit by the neck, and I took him back over where he belonged, throwed him up in the old boy's house, told him he better get rid of him. Next time I'd kill him, he messed with my dog, and I meant that. But, yeah, uh, it, se- it seems like if something happens to um, you know a person in a movie, people are kind of upset. But if something happens to their pet dog, they're even more upset. It's like, you know, I can, I can understand why you'd want to hurt that, that person, but why the dog? Yeah, I remember that movie that came out, Old Yeller, when it come out. My brother sat there and cried when that come on. Well, maybe that's what they're trying to figure out with us, is why we have these strange attachments to people. Uh, when, you, when you got into the fight with the uh, this female or fe- alien or entity, creature, whatever, did you get the perception from it that it was hurt or that it was startled or that it had any kind of emotions or was this just sort of dispassionate? No, it it, it was hurt. She was hurt and uh, or it was hurt and uh, it was startled because it wasn't expecting that to come out of me. I think maybe they thought that I was still, uh, you know, had that injection and couldn't move. But they kind of misread that. And what I should have done, I could have brought that thing home with me then. I of course, on the that. other hand, you have to think of it this way. And this is something you couldn't logically consider at the time, which is if this is exactly what happened to you, even if you were able to overcome them, what would you do next? You could have been somewhere in space at this point. You don't know where you were. You could have been anywhere, another dimension, somewhere in the middle of outer space. How would you know? Now, we're hitting up an anniversary here. 
Five years ago, nearly five years ago, one fall, we got permission from our network, GCN, to offer the Paracast ad-free to subscribers. And thus, we created the Paracast Plus, and a few months later, we decided to add to the value, and we created a post-game show, special interview show, things you wouldn't expect with the After the Paracast podcast, nearly five years ago. We offered it for a really low price, and we haven't changed the price all that much. It's four ninety nine a month right now. We did add a weekly price, a dollar forty nine a week, if you want to test it out and see if you like it. We also have annual memberships, five year memberships, and lifetime memberships. If you go for the five year and the lifetime, we give away free ebooks. Okay, special offer. To learn more, go to plus dot. TheParacast.com. That's plus.theparacast.com for more information about The Paracast Plus. Calvin Parker is joining us. The book is Pascagoula, The Closest Encounter. My story with Gene and Randall, you're in The Paracast. <laughs> Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. As you know, neighbors, web hosting can be pretty cheap, but not all hosting is the same. DreamHost wins best of awards year after year. You get unlimited disk space, unlimited bandwidth, and even the low-cost plans put your sites on high-performance SSDs. Want to know more about what DreamHost has to offer? Go to technightowl.com slash host. Once again, that's technightowl.com slash host. First game attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. When you use public Wi-Fi, hackers and identity thieves can see anything you do online. Embarrassing photos, your web history, even your passwords. That's why I use private internet access to encrypt my internet connection for less than 10 cents a day. Sign up now at privateinternetaccess.com and in just a few minutes, you'll be browsing anonymously and only sharing what you want to share. Privateinternetaccess.com. It's time to protect your online privacy. Most of you know that heart disease is the number one silent killer in the U.S. What if I told you for just $54.95 a month you could fight against heart disease naturally? At Heart and Body Extract, we've been helping thousands of people get back to a healthier heart. Don't just take my word for it. Check out all of the success stories at hbextract.com. Or to order, call 866-295-5305. That's 866-295-5305. hbextract.com. Don't risk it when you can take charge of it. Water is the single most important thing your body needs, so you want to be sure it's the best for you and your family. Since 2005, thousands have depended on Berkey Purified Water. The Berkey Guy provides the lowest priced filtration systems in every size. For incredibly delicious water now and in an emergency, get to GoBerkey.com or call 877-886-3653. 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com. We are GCN, the Genesis Communications Network. We've got listeners, lots of them. Around the world, around the clock, our listeners do what listeners do. They listen. And you know what listeners got? Needs. Needs for your products, your services, and money to buy those needs. With our network of over 1,000 radio stations, streaming on the web, and our satellite transmissions, we're reaching our listeners with quality conservative programming. But there's something our listeners don't have. Your offer to meet their needs. Any business needs buyers. But if our listeners don't hear your message, they're still going to buy what they need, just not from your business. 
So let's fix this. Tell us about your business. Then let our super creative department go to work to craft just the right message for our GCN listeners. Get started today with GCN, the Genesis Communications Network. Just shoot us an email. Advertise at GCNlive.com. Bacon lovers, we ship free. Try our amazing bacon. No refrigeration required. Proprietary value-added packaging provides 10-year shelf life and protects the leanest, thickest, center-cut, fully-cooked bacon in America today. Ready to eat right from the pouch or warm and serve. Savory and delicious. Wholesale price for your everyday use. Order today at readytoeatbacon.com. Readytoeatbacon.com. Hey, this is Marie D. Jones, the author of This Book is from the Future, and you are listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. Randall and his echo machine. We should have an official J. Randall Murphy echo machine. We'll merchandise it. Okay? We'll mark it up three or four thousand percent like they do with medications. Randall, you want to follow up on the questioning? Who knows what where you might have been during that time. You might have found yourself in a situation where, you know, you grab the alien by the neck and drag it to the door and then find out that you're you know, 10 miles above the earth or something. And I don't know why, but I really do believe they travel interdimensional and and get around. So it's just hard to say how they do. I know they're more advanced than what we are. And maybe they're not even, maybe it's not even mechanical stuff. I mean, at one time, I even thought in my mind this could be demons. And that was right after this. Well, and there then, is a prevailing religious opinion that UFOs and their alleged occupants are demonic. But then how would you know? You don't ever know. It's not meant to know a lot of times. All a man could do is read his Bible, believe in the one God that we know of, and just take the rest the way that it comes. And uh, I believe in God, and there's nothing ever going to change my mind about that. And I'm going to live to the best of my ability to live the way that the Bible and God tells us to and by the commandments. If you ever lose your conscience, then you lose your soul. And uh, I've seen a a lot of people that uh, are know of a lot of people that lost their conscience. It, it don't bother them to walk out and kill somebody or something. Well, they lost their soul when they lost their conscience. But then uh, with something like the experience that you had, you can imagine, say, maybe, you know, you said you'd just been tuning into some of the ancient aliens. Well, I mean, let's suppose that somebody had this happen to them, you know, a couple of thousand years ago when they had no idea about spacecraft or the possibility of life in other worlds or dimensions, they might believe that they were actually contacted by some kind of either demons or angels or, and then you could crop up a whole religion all about an experience just like this. What do you think of that? Oh, I could see how they believe that. I read a book one time, Carrots of the Gods, and he showed old runways and stuff. Now, part of it, you know, I kind of believed, and part of it I didn't, but just like anything else. But he showed runways and things back in the old times or what he thought was. And I could understand if you seen something flying by back then when it wasn't no airplanes, how you would think that it could be angels. I mean, it talks about this in the Bible. No. Some people say the Bible is really a good UFO book. We had Eric Von Daniken on the show some months back, and we had a religious scholar name of David Halperin, an old friend of mine, on the show to kind of give a more conventional explanation to some of the things that Von Daniken talked about. But yeah, it's a prevailing theory among a lot of people that if there are aliens amongst us today visiting us, how long have they been here? Do they have a vested interest? Do you ever think here, is one possibility that we were seeded by aliens. They oh. manipulate the local populace genetically, and here we are. I really feel like that. I think that we needed something to survive. 
you know, we like something to survive, and they probably helped us out with that, maybe. Helped us survive, and they keep an eye on it. There's no doubt in my mind that people that live here on Earth are destroying the Earth like it is. We got politicians that's destroying the Earth for the ever-loving dollar, the regular people and all. And I, I think they're trying to head all that off. I might not be able to see a whole lot of good in them, but I see good in them too. And I see evil, but that's true on anything. You walk down the street, you see good people and you see evil people. And it's no different with our race. I feel like there's good in it and I feel like there's evil in it. And I just hope that uh, we see the good. We had another guest on recently, Nigel Watson, and we talked about one of the theories for these types of experience being an effect on the mind from something like an electromagnetic force, something like ball lightning, for example, you would get a very bright bluish glow, like what you described, floating down out of the sky. And then the electromagnetic forces from that actually send people into what he called a fugue state, where they go into an alternate reality and experience these types of phenomena that you describe. And sometimes they can last for minutes or hours and sometimes even years. But his feeling was that so these uh, ball lightning EM fugue states could possibly explain something like this. What do you think of that idea? Well, I hadn't really thought about it any, but it could possibly do it. I was fishing one night, and I had a bunch of people in the boat with me. And talking about balls of lightning, we were uh, about 20 miles out in the Gulf, and there's a big ball of lightning coming toward us, or a big ball of fire, and it was coming straight for us. And we actually had to turn the boat to dodge it. And I've been trying yet to explain that. Oh, that's fabulous. That's a, that's a very rare phenomenon. What year was that? This hadn't been that long ago, uh, about 10 years ago. So none of the UFO stuff has discouraged you from using boats and going fishing? Oh, no, sir. Huh? <laughs> you, you can't quit living because you're afraid of something. You just got to keep on going at it. Yeah, you didn't exactly want to go back to the dock that night, but eventually you got back to living a pretty normal lifestyle and until this kind of all cropped up again more recently. Right. I figure this time, just man up and face it and go ahead and get it out of the way. Then maybe when this phase passes, I can enjoy my retirement. Where did you experience this ball lightning uh, phenomena? It was what they call nine miles of marsh and nine miles. And it's nine miles out of base St. Louis. And it's some good fishing over there. We all loaded up in the boat and was headed over there to go fishing. And that's where this big ball come across the water. And it was just right off the top of the water. And if we had to turn, it would have hit us. I just feel like if it had hit us, it probably killed everybody aboard the boat. What color was it again? Like a streak of lightning. You ever seen one of them, except it was in a ball. Interesting. Now, I tried to look up some stuff like that, and somebody wanted to say, well, it was marsh gas that formed into a ball and went. And I don't know if it was or not, but I, I do know it was a big old ball of fire coming to us. And it was moving across the water. It was getting after it, yes, sir. And there was a storm at the time, too. Coming, yeah. you could see clouds. Okay, very interesting. Well, thanks for coming on the show. I've enjoyed it. Calvin, do you have a website or someplace we can check out more of what you're doing? Uh, I'm using Philip Mandel's website at the Flying Desk. We got it. I do have a Facebook page, but I don't know if it'll let me take any more people or not. Right. You have to have, I think, a limit of 5,000 people. But people can follow you. They can't befriend you like you and I were befriended on Facebook. You can right. find us on Twitter, by the way. I don't know if people want to use Twitter anymore after some of the bad publicity. But we are known as the Paracast on Twitter. And mostly I put up show announcements there. We're on Facebook. We have two Paracast channels there. And even Facebook, you kind of wonder about the publicity. But if you want to talk about things about UFOs and other stuff, you can go to our forums at forum.theparacast.com, forum.theparacast.com. We also have After the Paracast radio show, which is available only to subscribers of our premium package, the Paracast Plus, 
And what this means is we give you that show, which is uncensored, and you could figure out what that means, I'm sure. Uncensored, no commercials. We just go on until we stop about all sorts of things, special interviews. You never know what's going to happen next. We also give you the ad-free version of this show. For more information, go to plus.theparacast.com. That's P-L-U-S dot theparacast.com. We set it up that way. You get relatively simple sign-up instructions, not as simple as I'd like, but basic sign-up instructions. Prices start just $1.49 a week. Our price, cheap, right? Calvin Parker. We appreciate you coming on the show. You're sincere. You have uh, incidents in your life that are very believable. Thank you for joining us on the Paracast. Thank you for having me. Y'all take care. The Paracast. Featuring Gene Steinberg and Christopher O'Brien is a copyrighted presentation of Making the Impossible Incorporated. Tune in next week for a new adventure in The Paracast.